eagles, falcons, and hawks. They're some of the most majestic birds of prey there ever was. And they're also the closest thing we have to a dinosaur, back when their ancestors used to hunt on the ground. But to find out how this is possible, we'll have to go way back. The journey starts here in South Africa, 200 million years ago, when dinosaurs have only just started to take on unique forms. In these new subtropical forests, the dinosaurs are only just starting to gain a stronghold on this world. This small leaf-eating creature is called Heterodontosaurus, meaning the reptile with different types of teeth. And rightfully so, because it has canines, molars, and incisors, also that it can survive on a more versatile variety of plants. Look closely at the pelt running down this creature's back, and you'll realize that it's made up of a series of quills, with a smaller layer of downy feathers underneath, perfect for camouflage or even self-defense like a porcupine would use. Looking closely at its mouth, you would realize that its predentary bone is covered by a layer of keratin. This is in fact a precursor to a kind of beak perfect for nipping off leaves or snapping at insects. However, Heterodontosaurus is instead an ancestor of large herbivore dinosaurs like Iguanodon, which themselves will leave no descendants. The subclass Dinosauria can be split into two groups, Sauricea, Lizard-Hipped, and Ornithischia, Bird-Hipped, the latter of which Heterodontosaurus is a member. Examples of feathery covering have been found in both classes, it therefore seems logical to assume that their common ancestor had a recessive mutated allele that coded for the sequence of amino acids to make the proteins that create feathers. It's the Sauricians, more specifically the theropod order, that will evolve into the birds. In Arizona, in a place known as the Cayenta Formation, we first see the theropods starting to take their stronghold on the world. This lush, temperate forest is now the perfect habitat for an entirely new breed of predator. This is the Lophosaurus, the largest predator in this ecosystem, and officially the largest killer on Earth at this time. As of yet, these new beasts are only just trying to find their niche, so that means they'll eat pretty much anything. This generalist behavior is reminiscent of alligators, but there are a surprising number of similarities to birds as well. Dilophosaurus already shows the basic body structure for a theropod dinosaur, which in itself is very reminiscent of that of a bird. Its feet come complete with three separate toes, similar to those of chickens. The head is even reminiscent of a cassowary, complete with two head crests and an elongated bird-like snout minus the beak. For now, however, these beasts are far more closely related to crocodiles, given their lack of feathers and, contrary to popular belief, they can't roar. Instead, what Dilophosaurus does is make low-frequency bellows by channeling air through its esophagus, just like a crocodile. Some large flightless birds, like the cassowary, do this as well, which is another link to reptiles. Right now, you can hear this individual issuing a mating call. But the females are all the way on the other side of the forest. This predator is the shape of things to come. There'll be nothing to rival him for another 40 million years until the late Jurassic emerges, with promises of larger predators like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. Dilophosaurus belongs to the group of theropods known as Coelophysoids. Its branching point also splits off into two other groups of theropods, Ceratosaurus, which includes dinosaurs like Carnotaurus, and Tetanurans, all other theropods. It's the Tetanurans that contains the new theropod group that will evolve into the birds. And the best examples of these new feathered beasts can be found in China, now at the very center of the dinosaur revolution. This is Incisivosaurus, a special type of tetanurin known as a maniraptorin, which means hand thief. Males usually have far more exuberant feathers, with a colorful crest for attracting females. Currently, this one is off foraging, though strangely enough, as a theropod, not for meat. 
This is a plant-eating, meat-eating dinosaur. A weird way to classify animals for sure. Look closely at her hands and you would see why she's called Panthe. Her hands are extraordinarily long and dexterous. Not only that, but the feathers adorning her arm are long and symmetrical. These are in fact a kind of wing. But because these long feathers are symmetrical, these wings are unable to create lift and therefore in Cisbosaurus can't fly. Another thing that links her to birds is her diet. She won't turn her snout at the odd bit of meat and is more likely to gobble up an insect or worm. But her main diet consists of flowers, fruits, and seeds. And that in itself is due to her teeth. Look closely at her mouth and you would realize that she appears to be missing most of her teeth. In particular, two large rodent-like incisors at the front of her mouth act like a sort of cracking device. This is a precursor to a kind of beak used to crack open nuts and seeds just like parrots do. Birds today are masters of the varied diet, which makes them excellent survivors, and they owe their advantage to dinosaurs like these. However, despite all of these bird-like characteristics, Incisivosaurus will ultimately leave behind no avian descendants. That honor actually goes to an entirely different type of Manny Raptor. A Raptor. Everything about raptors points to a highly energetic design, from the streamlined shape of their bodies to the length of their legs. The second toe of each foot contains a huge muscle attachment, and on the end, a retractable, sickle-shaped claw, similar to those of eagles. To catch up to and kill prey with such a weapon must have required a high metabolism, a commonality with birds. For another thing, the bones in their hand are remarkably similar to those of chickens, the only difference being that the bones in a chicken are fused. More recent finds show that not only did smaller raptors have feathers, but the arm bones of larger raptors had quill knobs, where long symmetrical feathers attached to form a kind of wing similar to that of Incisivosaurus. That's one less meal to be had for today, but now this raptor has strayed too far into the forest. He calls out for help. This is a dinosaur that hunts and travels in groups. Hawks today do the same thing and can cooperate with each other to form hunting patterns and use complex strategies to take down rabbits. Undoubtedly, the most important dinosaur in the history of paleontology is Archaeopteryx. When sickle claws were found on the feet of the animal, the evidence was unmistakable. Archaeopteryx was related to raptors. From that point on, it would appear that every single dinosaur that would give rise to the birds was indeed a raptor. In China, some one million years after Incisivosaurus, we finally see the feathered dinosaurs at their most spectacular. This is Sinornis, an important key in our understanding of the link between dinosaur and bird. So not only is it closer to true birds, but it's also among one of the first to fly. This individual may use this new evolutionary mechanism to soar the rivers in search of fish. Cynornis appears to be a unique mishmash of several characteristics. It's most certainly a Manuraptoran given its raptor-like hand bones, the only difference being these hand bones are now fused. The tail now ends in a small stub where all the vertebrae are fused to give better control to the tail, and one of the toes on each foot is opposable for gripping on perches. The pubis on the pelvis now also faces the same direction as the ischium, another feature of birds. The most striking feature is the presence of long, asymmetrical feathers on the forearms. Being asymmetrical allows these feathers to create lift. And that means Cynornis was most certainly capable of flight. Now the journey is complete, and the story of the evolution of the bird can be properly told. From the first dinosaurs 
to the first theropods. From the first feathered theropods to the first ones that managed to fly. It's a truly incredible tale about how evolution shapes animals to become the most successful.